The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon from TFNN. Welcome to the February 28th, the terrific Thursday edition of today's Trader Z Show. I'm your host, Stevie. Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be, I mean always be, pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Let's have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two-by-four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Today, during this show, you and I, we get to go check out the circumstance of these markets. We get to go figure out what the bulls and the bears, what the buyers and the sellers are communicating to you and I just past 1 o'clock in the afternoon I want you to absolutely know I'm grateful for your presence here. More importantly, I'm here to serve you during this entire hour. That's right. This show is nothing without you. So give us a call at 877-927-6648. If you can't call in, we got that. You can always let your fingers do the walk-in. You can send me an email. Do it early on because of these ISPs and so forth. You might send me an email towards the end of the show that I don't get till after I'm off air. So send them early and inside the end, Steve at TFNN.com, inside the subject heading, be kind enough to put radio show question. Helps me filter out all the rubbish. Your stuff is not rubbish. So radio show question in the subject heading. Of course, in the Tiger's Den, well, any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Thursday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Lush Show. Right now, the Dow trading off 20 points. S&P is flat. NASDAQ 100 up three points. So we'll call that flat. Russell is flat. Semis are flat. Trannies are basically flat. They're off 17 points. So pretty much a flat market out here across the board. Uh, gold's back $5. That's off of the lows of the session. Silver down 13. Pennies light sweet crude up 23 cents. Leading the charge dollar-wise. The upside, it is auto zone. It's in the zone, the green zone. It's up $18, a little over 2%. Google's up 10 bucks, about 1%. Chipotle up $8.60. That is 1.4%. Mercado Libre having another green day up nearly 2%. To the downside, Booking Holdings down 10%. Yikes, off 190 points. Western Mid something or others off 32%, $15 and change. Can't tell, medical. They can't tell. Uh, we can tell. They're down with 12 percent. They're down 12 percent today. A million shares is the volume, and they're off 10 buckaroonies out there. So no questions, no questions. Uh, nobody, no calls on deck. No questions, email-wise, and nothing inside the Tiger's Den. So let's go take a look at. Let's go take a look at the message of the markets out here, and to do that. Um, and Jay, even though I provided you with those uh, market profiles, we're going to change a couple of things up here. And a couple, well, I take that. No, am, I, am I? Yeah, no, I am going to change things up for you. Uh, this profile here, utilizing this special Stevie tool, is not going to contain, it's going to contain a different profile than the one that uh, you just took a look at as we were coming on the air. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn price off here. So I'm going to turn off. Uh, I'm going to turn off the retracement level as well. Just trying to get rid of some of the. Oh, what did I do? Uh, I think I. Uh, what did I? There we go. Uh, that's not what I wanted. Oh. I deleted what it was I was going to show you. So we'll have to do that afterwards because right now we've got a caller on the line, and that is Jeff in Dallas. So Jeff, thanks for calling. Uh, thanks for holding. How are you today? I'm doing well, Steve. Uh, thanks for taking my call. Sure. Tell hey, me how I'm I can help. Looking at the uh, EF contract, and uh, you know we hit that highs of around 2014, and just wondering if uh, this is um, just a corrective move, and off to new highs are we going to go? 
So here's 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 our take at this stage here. Here's what we know. Let's take a look at what we know inside of the ES Mini. And the first thing that we know is uh, Stevie's having trouble with his uh, with his system out here. There we go. Okay. So the high. Here's here's what we're gonna do. Uh, and, and what's your time frame actually, Jeff? That you're so what's the What's the basis behind your question? Are you trying to buy a dip? Are you trying to sell the high? Trying to do both? Give me t t time for. Give me some more information. Yeah, I'm looking to really uh, uh, sell the high. Okay, so if you were going to do it, then in essence, now would be the time, and uh, 2791 is where we're trading at. And if there, were, if this were to close, let's say today above 2798. So you got about eight points. That's uh, you know on each contract. That's what four hundred bucks at that stage. Um, you'd consider closing it out. Uh, really, you'd be looking for a close above twenty eight fourteen. So now you've got uh, fourteen nine points out there. You know I don't know what type of stops you use, your position size, and so forth. Um, the reason why you would consider selling the ES in essence right now is because price is traveling with inside a bearish structured profile out here, and that's what's up on our screen right now. And that twenty seven ninety eight figure, uh, that was the top of the uh, profile. So you're very close to it, which is nice because the back is up against the wall. The reason why I would say, hey, now would be a potential time uh, for a couple of reasons. One, uh, the structure of this box is bearish, meaning that the center line at 27.68, and by the way, when I say center line or point of control, it's where both buyers and sellers uh, believe there's fair value inside the range of 27.10 to 27.98. So since that center line or point of control is closer to the top where we know that's where the snipers are, that's where the sellers are, you're in a congestion zone of where sellers should be able to take hold. And if they don't, then get, then you know it. Um, if you are a more conservative type style trader, then you really want to see a close below 27.68.75 uh, to go ahead and then ride it down to potentially 27.10. That would really become the first target on the uh, way down. The close back above 27.98, though, or certainly the high from a few trading sessions ago that was on February 25th, that says you're on the wrong side of the trade. Mm. What is it? Does that help you out? And what else is it yeah. that you're looking at inside the ES that maybe I've overlooked? Uh, no, I mean, I, I think that, that definitely uh, addresses what I'm what I'm looking for. I missed I missed the high at 14. I got a little piece of it sold too early and still think we're uh, that this is a bear, bear structure as well and just want to get back into the position. So. It, yeah, it, it is. Uh, with the exception of if we clear those highs. If we clear right. those highs from the 24th or whatever the day was that I gave you, uh, then this yep. is going back to the all-time highs out here. Yeah, you know, and so I you agree. don't want to be on the wrong side of the trade. So I think the risk-reward, depending on your position size, is pretty much uh, set up. Uh, what's nice about that, if you're trading the ES Mini, you know, you've got your stop in place. And so if something takes place overnight, you get taken out, you know, your risk, you, you, you know, you, as opposed to, let's say, trading, you know, the SDS or SPXS or one of the ETF structures out there. Right. Okay. Excellent. Any, anything else I can do for you? No, I appreciate it. Thanks, Steve. Hey, Love you bet. Thanks. You bet. Oh, thanks. Thanks. Much appreciated. That was Jeff in, uh, where was Jeff? Uh, in Texas? Uh, where was uh, Dallas, Texas? Gotta love Dallas, Texas. Great golf courses there. And some pretty good food. And some very kind people. It's Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. 
the TAS Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of TAS Market Profile, the TAS Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. So uh, we've got a request inside the Tiger's Den to take a look at the uh, Spot Volatility Index. Trading right now at 1457. Uh, and the chart portion of my screen, uh, so 1458, give or take. So there's nothing out of line here. We take a look at the Spot Volatility Index. Uh, it's below all of its uh, futures contracts, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, not trading just yet. Um, and uh, so there's nothing out of whack here. It's actually, uh, who asked about that? Um, who asked about the VIX? Uh, that was Tucker. So Tucker, not, nothing out, in fact, it's, a, it's bullish in structure the way that the pricing is aligned here. So there's no signal uh, the, coming from the spot volatility index that Steve sees that suggest, uh, in essence, that uh, Jeff and I should be looking at the short side of the S&P 500. That's why, at least in his situation in trading the ES, with price up towards resistance, you know, what we've done is we've just identified, hey, okay, where where does price need to get above to say we're wrong on that trade? Um in order to, to do that, uh, and not that there aren't topping signals out there, um, because there are, but from the VIX volatility standpoint, Tuck, what you and I know is before things would get moving in earnest to the downside, price would need to close above the 50-day exponential moving average, 1767. If price moves up towards that blue line on my screen and finds resistance there, then it's just your garden variety retracement that may take place. And you would you would use this and you would combine that with the bottom of the profile as an example to see where price is forming inside the ES Mini. That's assuming there's no other profile that forms out here. In, in the ES Mini, as an example, with regard to this morning, you know, why did price stop where it stopped? Actually, it's easier for me to show you on a different chart. Same 30-minute chart, but just one that's a little bit cleaner. 
for you to take a look at. And it's really with regard to one of the tools that you and I use out here, right? That Tom DeMarc set up the nine count as well as the trend lines that are left behind. So if we take a look at the most recent trend line, let me get my crosshairs out here. Um, it really began forming at four o'clock this morning. So four o'clock this morning, we started seeing successive closes on each bar that were higher than the bar four bars early on a 30 minute time frame chart out here. It formed that nine count at eight o'clock this morning. Now that high was taken out after the release of the job numbers, uh, I suppose, or at nine o'clock, but price found resistance at the resistance line. These are the solid green lines out here. At least it did at nine o'clock, nine to 10. And then when price started moving lower and bears were starting to lick their chops, all price was doing was coming back to test a key level of support, that red solid line out there. Now, for those of you that were intraday traders and you didn't have access to this, you've got to ask yourself, why didn't you have access to this? This is easy stuff. It's easy for you to even manually go ahead and calculate on a 30-minute chart out there. you got 30 minutes, in essence, to calculate each bar out there and see the nine count and draw that line. Of course, I've automated that process out here, um, but, but, but why aren't you using it? Maybe you're not familiar with it. Maybe you should just subscribe to Mastering Probability, even if only for 30 days, to get access to the workshop that's on the members page out there, plus along, along with some other great workshops, including last night's How to Overcome Fear and Five Easy Steps. Why wouldn't you use this information out here? You and I, we get to look at it all the time, all the time. All the time we see how it works we also see how it fails failure says okay you close below a support line you're headed lower then you've got to go identify where that next area is next pattern or whatever it might be so with regard to spot volatility next just coming back to the question out here um you know not uh, nothing really there tuck now when we take a look at spot volatility index, which is also at the bottom of this screen here we're taking a look at the new york stock exchange and a reason to say to you know, Jeff, hey, okay, I get looking for the short position inside the ES Mini. Uh, right now, today, as we speak, inside the New York Stock Exchange, it's advanced decline oscillator reading. That's panel number two is below zero. The reading is minus 24.92 out here. Um, so that says that sellers are the ones in control. So it just kind of supports the idea of uh, looking at a short. But the question is, what does that mean to be short or bearish, um, you know, in, in terminology. And I have to really especially watch that because I don't want you to misinterpret what it is that I'm saying. In this case here, in Jeff's case, it's just, it's nothing more. It could be nothing more than a trade. So just because this tells us sellers are in control, and yesterday, did we close below that level? Let me see, 227. 227, we did not. So you need to see it close below that today and then confirmation to follow through tomorrow. But even then, it could still just simply be a normal pullback. And the reason is because that spot volatility index is below the 50-day. And, and yes, Tuck, there is quite a divergence between price and the advanced decline oscillator. So it's not the advanced decline line, but the advanced decline oscillator. I just want to make sure that, that I throw that out there. Uh, but those divergences, when you take a look at this screen, where they really have their meaning is combining it with regard to where price the spot volatility index is trading in relationship to its 50-day exponential moving average. So we've had these divergences before. For example, at the at the high, the the all-time high out here in January of 2018 for the New York Stock Exchange. But you will see at the bottom portion of my screen, Tuck, see how how price was above the 50-day exponential moving average down there on the left-hand side. Different condition than what it is that we have now, and that that condition and and how you really use the so-called fear indicators, nothing to fear about it. It's about how do you want to make it one of your friends, best friends out there for helping you identify and understand what the market is communicating to us. When it is below the 50-day exponential moving average, it tells us there is still lots of liquidity out there, right? And liquidity in this market, in essence, is coming from the U.S. and then overseas and internationally. And from the U.S., we get to take a look at that spot volatility index. From the U.S.'s perspective, we also get a chance to go take a look at the high yield income funds out there. What's HYG is one. There's several of them. If we take a look at what the uh, high yield corporate bond fund is doing here, you can see it's not showing us, not yet, any kind of significant indication of a move lower. If you put the HYG, the advanced decline oscillator line, along with either New York Stock Exchange or S&P, and you start to take a look at when one, when, when you'll see the divergence, or you'll see the moves lower 
Um, you know, because right now, so there's plenty of liquidity. There's liquidity flowing into the corporate debt. The only thing I know we talk about or it's mentioned, hey, you need bad news in order for the markets to move lower. And in a sense, uh, sure. But what you really need, forget the news, what you really need is a lack of liquidity in the marketplace. I don't consider at all uh, light volume up at the highs a lack of liquidity. Maybe it's distribution, maybe it's not. We've all seen this play over and over again. And then you've got the uh, then you've got the overseas capital. You know what what do overseas traders dial for example here in euros uh, or in dollars, what what do we see? So we're always looking for some type of, uh, and this is the longer term or medium, uh, uh, because we're using a monthly time frame out here. Um, but you're looking for that liquidity to dry up as well. Here is where we can take a look at the Dow Equity Futures contract. You know, we can see where it is in dollars. That's on the left-hand side. Then euros over here, panel number two, and then yen, and then finally uh, pounds out here. And then you're looking for synergy where price is moving in the exact same direction for all four instruments you could be a seller in dollars but be a buyer in euros and vice versa hey stevie Rhodes, tfnn.com live we'll be right back I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com. <laughs>
Welcome back, up, folks. Dow off 34, virtually flat, S&P flat, and then NDX 100 flat as well. Let's go to one of our questions out here. This is coming in from Michael P. Michael P. writes in a very nice uh, little emoji there, Michael. I like that. This says, uh, hello, Steve. I've got uh, X number of shares of uh, Chipotle. Thinking of selling and buying back lower, or do I add here? Uh, so you're either thinking of selling or adding. Oh, okay. Uh, thanks. Uh, very cool emoji there. Is that a picture of you? Uh, I'm asking Michael P. I, I, I like that. That'd be pretty cool for work. Um, and I'd say, hey, how do I get that same thing with me? That's a pretty cool. Uh, I don't, you know, that's a pretty cool one. All right. Well, I, it's neither here nor there. We want to go take a look at Chipotle. So if we take a look at Chipotle, here's our standard screens. Standard screens meaning daily, weekly, monthly, uh, with regard to market profiles out here. So what what Michael knows and what you know is price on a daily basis. Wide price spread, accelerated volume on the trading Dow Summits and earnings report out here on February the seventh. 4.3 million shares to the upside, nice big gap. And now what it uh, formed a, a bear structured, that doesn't mean bearish, just means bearish in structure with regard to where buyers and sellers are. Uh, profile back on uh, Valentine's Day. Oh, just in time for Valentine's Day. Now, what we can see here, it's really a great example of that uh, center line of the box, the point of control. So bearish in structure because the center is close to the top versus the bottom. But, but remember, that center line, that point of control is where both buyers and sellers believe there's fair value inside that range. And look at how we've seen support there. We've seen support every time sellers have tried to push, have to think think in terms of, like, like to me, when we take a look at this, this is just us being up in the box for the uh, Patriots or the whatever your favorite football team is. Uh, we've got a we've got that larger view of the field and the players and what's going on and support and resistance. And it, you, know, you just have a better perspective when we are able to break it down like that. And so every time the sellers are trying to run the ball downfield, they cannot get past the defense at the $593 yard line out there so very strong here so michael's question is should i sell when we take a look at this chart here is there any reason why you would sell knowing that you've got strong support at 593 if you sold it at 607 are you going to be lucky enough to buy it at 593 i don't know granted there's real strong resistance at 612 out here so i'm not seeing the reasons to sell at least from this chart on a weekly perspective Weekly says, hey, we're above the top of the profile, 489, so no problem there. Uh, monthly, you're above the top of the profile uh, there, so that looks pretty good. Remember, when you get above or below, so when Chipotle was breaking the lower price uh, back in November 2015, there was a close below the bottom of that bullish structured box out here, right? And then we never really saw a close above the top of the box again until April Fool's Day, April Fool's Month out here, April 2018. It breaks above that, closes above that, and so that says to us what? Change in trend. Just like the bottom of these boxes held here in Chipotle on the run to the upside, um, for the most part. And I've got to qualify that because we did see a few months where price was below the bottom of the box back here in uh, May and in uh, June of 2015. And then earnings report or whatever it might have been in July 2015 totally wiped out uh, the short side. The whole reason why someone would use stops on any trade or investment out here. Okay, so we're asking the question, should you, should you, should you buy here? Just like we don't see a reason for you to sell, we also don't see a reason for you to buy. Why would you buy up towards resistance, knowing that, hey, maybe the next buy area might be 593.90? Now, a close below 593.90, and I'm not talking by a buck or something, but, you know, a decent close below that. Let's call it $5. Uh, then you can anticipate that price is going to go back to the breakout area. Two levels of breakout. Here we see the 565 level. Happens to be the bottom of the box. It's also the low. I would imagine it's the low. Yeah, 566.68 is the actual low. So 566, 565 would be the uh, would be the uh, would be the coming back to the first level of the breakout area, the ideal spot. And I'm not saying it's coming down there. I'm not saying it's coming down there anytime soon. Is the 530.73 level okay? 
What else can we take a look at on Stevie's charts? We can come over here. We can take a look at the Ninja Trader version. It's got Stevie's special tools on it. We can see that prices moving higher, doing less relative energy out here. Created that Three River Evening Star. So it says, um, hey, you've got some real resistance out there. You've got a potential topping pattern. You've got the top of that profile on a daily basis. So you've got some real resistance out there. Doesn't mean it can't get taken out doesn't mean it can't get taken out. So the daily says, eh, I don't really see the reasons to sell knowing where you've got support here. But I mean, if you want to sell right, if you want to, okay, you know, go for it. You're just asking me for what are the charts telling us. If I go take a look at Chipotle on a weekly basis, it looks like we could be in week number eight of that uh, TD setup, nine count. You know, does that mean anything? Well, it can. Week eight called the high in Chipotle back in May of 2017 out here. So it's a reason to be cautious. That's all. Reason to be cautious out here. It could be week nine or ten really as well or you can see price just simply move through there and continue going higher so the weekly just says okay a bit of a caution but we already knew about the caution michael on the uh, daily chart and the monthly chart for chipotle says hey, you know what i think it really wants to take a ride on the reading and the reading gets up to that tdst line that's the green resistance line that's at the high from november 2015 that's at 632.98 so 632 could be real resistance 612 is uh, some uh, resistance on the uh, daily time frame out there. So if you get above 612, look for 632. So I don't know where you're in on your trade and what you're, whether it's a trade or investment. Uh, I don't know the answers, but I've laid out for you as best I can, daily, weekly, and monthly, uh, areas where the battles are going to take place. And then from there, you should be able to decide where it is and what it is that you want to do. So thanks for writing in. Cool emoji. I hope that helps you out with regard to the way that uh, we both, and taking a look at the charts and, and the tools that we use out there, getting the message of the uh, market. So you sent me an email with the uh, a link to the uh, emoji thing. So I'll have to check that out. Well, that pretty much means that's you. Wow, that's pretty cool. Oh, it is. Oh, I like that one even better. So the second one you send me, and folks, you really can't see it. I don't know. Can you see it? Can, can the guys there, can you see that? That's a cool emoji. Is there a way to blow that up? Oh, there is. Yeah, there. Maybe, maybe, maybe you can say I know what my camera does out there. But that that fits me more so. You know, the emoji with the sunglasses on. I like that. I like that. Okay, best thing that's happened to me all day. All right. So from the golf guy. Um, hey, Steve. Great show as usual. Thanks. Can you check H N H A F? That's a lot of initials to uh, type in. H H and HAF, it's a small Asia tech company, not in it, but wondered how the chart looks uh, from our perspective. Wow. I don't, uh, it looks like this is uh, hand high precision industrial, and it looks like this thing maybe started trading a few days ago. Is that right? No, uh, that's, in, no, my data goes back to 2013. HN, HAF. Sorry about that, golf guy. I am not getting anything through on my system uh, for whatever the reasons are, so I can't give you any kind of perspective out there on uh, this uh, ticker symbol. Don't know why. HNHAF. Is this maybe a pink sheet company or something like that? I, I don't know. In any event, uh, uh, we'll be right back, folks. Dow's off 18, NASDAQ up 5. If you are in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. 
That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, uh, folks. So no other questions here on deck. Uh, nothing that I see in the Tiger's Den. So uh, phone lines, email lines are open, Steve, at TFNN.com and 877 Let's go take a look at Goldilocks out here. A couple of things to report on in the case of gold. It's trading on $6.20 at 13.15 out here. So uh, something that occurred yesterday, I think we took a look at this chart. And then last night when I sent uh, after the workshop and I sent out my end of day reports to clients, I made them aware. I said, hey, when we're taking a look at uh, gold out here, I wanted them to notice that uh, yesterday evening, uh, this was at about five o'clock, but I didn't send out my update till like 7, 7.30, that the uh, Stevie's green line had turned red. Now, when the green line turns red or red line turns green, tells us our price oscillator is at the zero line. And the phenomena that's typically associated with that is we see price and that line catch up to each other. So that was at 7, that was at 7 o'clock, that was sent out. Certainly would have helped any intraday traders and what to anticipate. And uh, sure enough, this morning uh, when I was up and certainly during the uh, 4 a.m. to 9 a.m. session, what we saw gold do was test that line. Now, the really important thing here, now it's a five-hour chart that has given us the best signals. When I say best signals, here you can see the uh, TD setup nine count calls the high. Now what we're looking at is, and then we can see that support was broken. That's that red horizontal line was tested back here at about 5 p.m. Remember on the 21st was tested again about uh, 15 hours later. And then finally was broken through yesterday when we were doing the uh, show between one and two. We said, hey, danger out here. But the line, I hadn't looked to see where the price oscillator was, but the line hadn't turned. It was still green at that stage. So. What happens during this phenomena, I can't tell you why, I just know that it does, uh, is that when you get that test or test and rejection here, it tells you what the real intent of price is, what buyers and sellers are doing. Pretty cool, right? I think it's pretty cool. 
So as long as price closed below that red line coming into 9 o'clock, which it did, that's the session right here. We're in the candle. It closes at 2. says, I want lower prices. Well, where would lower prices come to? Well, here we can just use the simple A to B equals CD to the downside. That gives us an initial price projection of 1309 the 1 to 1 1.272, 1301. So we would say that that is the range of where price is likely headed to using the five-hour time frame chart. Now, um, there were some traders inside the den. I wish during shows I could post charts there, but if I do, it's going to override the charts of the uh, of the host and into the live Tiger TV screen, so that's not a cool thing, and it's why I don't do it. But what I was trying to at least suggest inside the Tiger's Den and show was, hey, and this was at about uh, 1030 this morning. At 1030 this morning, there was a brand new profile. So this is a five-minute chart, by the way, that we're looking at. It works on all time frames. So here's one of the things we know. Remember we talked about, hey, you start breaking through support and inside of gold. That was at 755 this morning. 755 this morning, we see a close below bottom of a, a profile. We see a bounce up to the top of the next profile, and then it closed back below at 825. So you knew between 755 and 825, in one half hour period of time, you were seeing a change in trend, intraday, change in trend take place. And so knowing this, you would never, never, never have tried to take a long position at that stage here. Instead, you would have said, uh huh, I can go ahead intraday and try to ride gold to the downside. And we can see that we've we've never seen a close above the top of the profile, even at 10 o'clock this morning. At 10, for a five minute between 10 and 10.05, all we saw was price get up in a bearish structured box out here. That's where the cursor is at. And, in fact, the sellers were able to take control, push price back below support, again, being the bottom of the box. Here, voila, at 10.35 in the morning, when traders are saying, hey, what should I do? I think um, and Maria took uh, some profits off the table, and I saw that, and I said, okay, here's what you should be contemplating or anticipating next. Now, I gave her uh, uh, prices both on a 10-minute basis and a 5-minute basis because both of those had bullish structured market profiles. And it said, okay, here's where we should see, it's another spot, where we should see an attempt by sellers to push price higher, push price higher to where? Well, that at that stage, it was 1319. Never got all the way up there, just kind of bounced around. But a new profile came into play out here at about 110, 110 this afternoon. And uh, one, yeah, 110 to 115, price is below the 13. Now, this profile here, the interesting thing about this is this is in between the prior profile. So this is kind of uncertain. Both buyers and sellers right here, they're uncertain. If sellers were certain and the profile would have been forming, we would have seen this thing form below the current profile. But we don't have that. So I'll say with regard to, hey, what's the next move entry time period with regard to uh, Goldilocks? I'm uncertain. We're just still in this little range. It, right now, by minute basis, it is sellers that are out of control because price is below the bottom of that box. If price on a five minute basis and as long as this profile exists gets above 1316, well, then we can see some additional move higher. But I'm giving you a very short term chart. This is five minutes versus five hours. And then the five-hour time frame, it says that gold wants lower prices. Now, of course, what we have to do, what you and I, what's incumbent upon ourselves is, hey, on the daily chart, what are traders across the globe thinking out here? Well, gold's lower. It's below yesterday's close in pounds. It's below yesterday's low in yen. It's below yesterday's low in, in euros out here. It's below yesterday's low in dollars out here. Just trying to get the larger perspective. So traders across the globe are seeing the same thing with regard to gold and their currency. So what do you think that means? Yeah, it means that we can easily see the lower price. So that A to B equals CD or the bottom of the daily profile out here. If you're looking at the very bottom panel of my screen at 1309, even on this screen here, which is my composite screen, and its market profile says 1288 could even be a target. I gave a different target in the den earlier. I wasn't using the composite symbol when I, uh, I provided that information. We don't need to deal with that lower level yet until we see what happens in that price target in that 1309-ish type area out here. Now, the cool thing, I think cool thing, maybe cool thing, perhaps cool thing, we'll get to the cool thing already, is, hey, the GDX is not doing too shabby. In fact, you can take a look at the five top uh, gold mining equities here 
ticker symbol Gold, AEM, Newmont Money, Gold Corp, FNV. Uh, they're all doing okay. They're trading slightly higher. The GDX itself is off 10 cents out here. So in the case of GDX land, what does that mean? Well, it means, hey, okay. But uh, here's the daily time frame. You know what I should do for the GDX is give you those profiles. So here, this will give you the daily. So you can see what's going on here. And the daily says, all right, you know, I get, I get the reason why buyers are trying to step in here. Because here we're inside a bullish structured box, right? The center line, which is at 2221, bottom at 2203. Um, so in order for the GDX to uh, turn heads out here, it needs to close above the top. 2258. A close below 2203 says there's problems. In fact, uh, we haven't seen a close below the bottom of a profile. It hasn't traded below the bottom of a profile since November of 2018 out here. So the real critical level inside of the GDX is going to be 2203. Just like the critical level for gold uh, is the uh, figure that we gave you. I don't remember what it was. 1309, something like that. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. Dow's off 23, S&P down about two points. We'll be right back. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. No matter what kind of trader you are, 2018 is a great time to try out a subscription to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. Whether you just plan on diversifying your portfolio with some exposure to gold and gold mining equities, or you're a gold bull that sees 2018 as the year of commodities, now is a great time to sign up for the Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his Gold Report every Monday morning before the market opens and covers a variety of topics including gold, silver, platinum, copper, the XAU and HUI, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as more than 20 of the most actively traded mining equities. Start your 2018 off with a bang and sign up for The Gold Report today. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. For all the details and to start your subscription right now, visit the front page of TFNN.com and you'll find The Gold Report under Investment Newsletters. Nico DeHaan and Paige Clark have launched a special for a limited time only. Save 25% off Primal Edge and Health Signals. Just use promo code HEALTH for Health Signals or use promo code PRIMAL for Primal Edge and save 25% off instantly when you sign up. All the details are available on each order page at TFNN. Certified personal trainer Nico DeHaan's newsletter Health Signals comes out twice a month and is packed with great information on health, fitness, and diet. Primal Edge is specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox, and contains a special blend of ionic soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. This sale won't last long. Sign up now using promo code HEALTH for health signals or PRIMAL for Primal Edge and save 25%. For all the details, visit the front page of TFNN.com right now. This is David White. Stay tuned because coming up next is the Power Trading Hour right here on TFNN.
Welcome back, uh, folks. Time for us to go take a look at Fannie Mae, ticker symbol FNMA. That's from Michael H. in uh, New Hampshire, Merrimack, uh, New Hampshire. So the question is, um, not currently in it, shall I consider purchasing at 265 for a short-term trade with a goal of selling around 315? So as we go take a look at uh, Fannie Mae, uh, here's your daily, weekly, monthly with regard to its uh, market profiles. You can see your trading in between a fairly wide box on the daily time frame, 218 is support, the bottom. Uh, 304 is the top, which is resistance. Uh, 318 is the top of the uh, weekly profile out there. And um, so that's what we know there. Here's what I'm going to suggest to you. So your question is, should you buy the 265? I don't see the 265 as the potential buy area. Here's what I see and take a look at Fannie Mae. Here's what we know. What we know is that on the trading session of uh, February 23rd, so just a few days ago, it got to that uh, Tom DeMarc set up nine count. That was the high, and you've seen price pull back at a blow bearish and golfing candle there. And what where price may pull back to, doesn't have to, but uh, you're trading below Stevie's green line. Um, I would say it would be the trading session of December, December, February 12th. Watch that trading session. If price pulls back to 238, that's better than 265. Um, that would be your that would be your entry uh, level. That's what I see. You know, wait to see if price will pull back. Uh, to support out here. Uh, and if it closes below that, then being long on the trade is wrong, and maybe 218 is the uh, number. So, uh, Mike, that's what I see when I take a look at the uh, trade, because out here, in looking at all these other charts, I don't see where that entry point might be. I think you're just looking at the low of yesterday, in essence, as the possible place to get in. So thanks so much for being here, folks. Uh, David White is out for the afternoon, so we're going to get a replay of the uh, Nadex Hour with uh, Tom and Tommy from this morning. But then you get Tom O'Brien 3 to 5, and then uh, I'll definitely be back with you on uh, Freaky Friday, fun day. So thanks so much for being here, and we look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Take care. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com.